<laughs> and Miss Mary, we are off. We are off? Well, I'm off. I don't know about you. But, yep, okay. I'm off. Well, I'm off my rocker. Does let's, that count? Uh, let's see if we made it live or not. I have yet to hear from well, the respondees. Oh. Um, yeah, I guess Kate can hear us, sir. She's just typing at me, but whatever. Anyway, welcome to the Dork Table, where dork, dork dork lives matter, Miss Mary. They matter. Yes, dork lives matter. A lot. Dork, dork. Dork of the jungle. <laughs> anyway, it's the dork table. You got to be dorky, right? You got to right. slap me on the back. It got us on the air without begging Grim for help. I know you did a wondrous job. I know I didn't mute my uh, headset this time without knowing it. So, so we got bots right. and bodies to chatter and chitter chat and talk to and entertain our. I see that. Here, let me give you the startup cue to say hi to the bots. And the body. Say hi to the box. And <laughs> I feel like I'm in Young Frankenstein. <laughs> With a little bit of delivery. And forgiveness. <laughs> okay, right up top, we got Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Why? Because mm. I said so. That's, That's right. We all. Yeah, we got Beetle. Beetle. Hey, Beetle, how you doing? Is Pippi in your lap, Beetle? Uh-oh. I don't want anybody else to know what Pippi is so that everybody will go, damn, that Beetle, he's a pervy little bugger. He's always got a Pippi in his lap. Grimner is here, the RLM god, don't you know? And guess what, Grim? Slash didn't need assistance. Nanner, nanner, nanner. <laughs> wow. Our yellow. I have Anakin. streaks like that for periods of time. Sweet. Yeah. I also see the lovely Moose Coil. And guess what? Last night, Grimmy and Moose Coil was doing a freakish ball. I saw some <laughs> stuff on, on Twitter about that. Yep. I haven't listened to it yet. I but did. hey, yeah. I will. Mm-hmm. I will. Eventually, I'll get to it. Ooh. I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here. Ooh. Hi, Miss Kate. How's yeah. things in Flurry? Flurry. Uh oh. No audio here. Wait How a minute. Restart. Reset, restart. If we're yeah, if everybody else is hearing this mental, it's you. Yeah, Moose says it's working, so you got to reboot yeah. or reset something there, buddy. Oh, I he can't hear us. Restart. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, I typed it in the chat. I saw that. Yeah, I was. Busy. But then he left. He probably like, figured it ah! out. Yeah. He, and away he goes. He's done this Ain't before. Yes, he has. Uh, let's see. Anti. We got an anti and an uh, anti with a tail. Ooh. You know, those tails are, I wish I had a tail. No, you don't. Man. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Cause, well, besides the fact that somebody would always be coming up and grabbing my tail. but Not all the time. Just once in a while. I think it's way cool to have a tail because, you know, when your hands are busy and then you can mm. use a tail to open the door. No, you can't. That would be cool. I have a tail and I'm telling you, it won't open the fucking door. Yeah, well, I'm thinking I would probably always be chasing my tail, and that would and, be kind of scary. And it's on the wrong and? side, too. Oh, well. I learned okay. that from a child in my 20s. Oh, okay. She asked her dad one, was... one time at dinner, she says, Dad, why do mans have tails? <laughs> <laughs> well, she wandered in, and she, he was taking a shower, and she, later on she had this brainstorm at the dinner table. So, hmm. children. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuck with me, though. I have a niece that asked her mommy. Of course, mommy had nursed several children. And the niece says, Mommy, when I grow up, will I have boobies nice and long like yours? You gotta love kids. Either love them or fluff them. In any case, Chow Sidoni is in the kitty cat. We have a musical interlude with Flash. Had it out. That's what I call quality control, little missy. There you go. There you go. We also got the lovely Psycholo is here. No, she's hey, at the Psycholo. she's at the beach with the dog. Oh, she's at the beach. Well, she's uh, still logged in. Oh yeah. We got Forcer. Dayum Van Meter is in the chat. Dayum hey, girlfriend. Mm. And I also see Flash. Somebody that's my cohort uh, here on on the he's he's the king dork. Arg. Arg. I have spoken. On Saturday. I also see. 
Bjork, because apparently he and Vanna are not on speaking terms. He can't buy, buy a vowel. Oh. Good thing you're not worrying about vowels. That's wow. for darn sure. Yeah. I'm here. I'm here. Graham uh, D in the chat, as well as Meister Brower. Hey, hey Woody. Woody. We Woody got a print in the chat, mm. as in it's in print. California. You know, it would be cool if the chat was in cursive, because you'd be surprised how many people would be able to understand it. <laughs> It would almost be like talking in code. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that's what it would be. I also see Rob Wikes is here. Hey, Rob, did you fire up the bubbler or not? Fire up the bubbler, tiny Ooh, bubbles. Tiny bubbles. FL Mike. We also got a trust <laughs> note in the chitty chat. <laughs> and Anna White, the letter wow. turner of the RLM channel. Got a W4DKV in the chat, as well as Wendell Short. <laughs> The well, chat is not in cursive, but there is a lot of cursing. <laughs> so Well, that's true. Oh, Mike says it's cursed. Well, <laughs> probably, yeah. Curses. Yeah. Foiled again. Wow. I also see the Phantom is here. Mm. Phantom. As well as CC66, the uh, lovely Miss Chloe is in the chat. Chloe Singular. Cyborg Noodle. Mm. May you be touched by the cyborg. Mental. I know, Denark Cakes is here. Mm. And Zika Malpa. Zika Malpa. Okay, hon, I know I butchered that name. Who cares? <laughs> we'll live. <laughs> I'm sure they will as well. The I mortality okay. rate will amaze you. It'll be just like Corona, only different. Only lighter? I don't think it's you can get any light. fucking lighter than you know, that shit. That's there is a Corona light, but it comes in a bottle. Mm. In any case, um, E Man yeah. is here as well as oh, and Jeff. Yeah. Frumpy. The Canadian and then. Um, Ribbit. <laughs> as opposed to Rabbit. JJ's, no, 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 JJ's is here. Uh -oh. Hey, Scottish uh -oh. fellow. Uh -oh. Yes. Uh, pucker up a cake in uh, the chat, uh, as well as at WJ 2002. Paloma Vol Voladora. Hello, Paloma Voladora. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, well, I'm sounding very exotic uh -huh. in the chitty chat. Don't you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not really. Not. That was the uh -huh. last word to hit my imagination. But Oh, okay. Go ahead. Well, Papa Papa Pontos is here, mm -hmm. as well as. Sock Puppet! Sock and Puppet! And the crew. The one, the only, the holiest, ami, 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 Roger ever. And there you go. That's the whole kit and caboodle. Good. And you know what? Okay. I have a complaint on the door table. Uh-oh. Yep. You know who I'm upset with? Do we take complaints seriously? I don't know. Maybe not. But I still have a complaint. <laughs> okay. So I entitled our podcast In My Complaints Honor. And I called the show today. How could life get any better? Question mark. See, and there are probably people out there traumatized for life right now mm. because they're trying to figure out how life could get better. Well, that's because they're trying to fit in, in my humble estimation. If you don't play the game the way you're told, you stand out a little bit, but you live longer. <laughs> well, you know, when you sit there and you worry about things, you know, especially things that haven't happened yet, <laughs> you're taking away the joy that you could experience right now. Oh. So stop it. Plus, it gives oh. you gray hair. Although, I've been told mine is silver, not gray, so... There you go. So what what really got me upset is all this, uh, what are they calling that? Tracing, uh, contact tracing. That is now, the second most ignorant idea I've seen America come up with so far in my life. I think it's kind of ignorant, too, because, number one, contacts are little bitty and they're smushy, and you put them down on a piece of paper, and then you trace around them, and then they don't fit in your eye right anymore. Uh-huh. But I'm being I'm being semi I'm being semi serious in a sense. Okay. And I'm being about as serious as contact tracing is. This is gonna happen though. And people are gonna get seriously fucked up over it. Oh cripes, they've been contact tracing since 
forever. Behind your back. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, now, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, now it's out in the open. And we're going to hire people because we caused them to lose their jobs. But wait, we're going to restart the economy by hiring people to wander around and snoop on you. It's kind of like Pokemon Go, only you get a paycheck. Yeah. Well, my advice to the future uh, participants of the contact trace, yeah, I think Hannibal Lecter's got an excellent cookbook. <clears throat> oh, yeah? Oh, well, there's going to be food shortages as well as... Bad attitudes, misunderstandings, people that don't like their privacy invaded. It's going to be a shitstorm, like a shitstorm should be. Somewhere, yeah. It probably will be and somewhere, but not now, here, because you know what? I planted more food today, so... Yeah, but the Jew in me still likes meat. You can't plant meat. you gotta, you got to kill your meat. Sad, but it's the way it works. And being as the... Uh, you can't plant your meat? No, you can't plant your meat. It won't grow that way. Well, I'm just going to have to get my mind out of the place where it was of at. Of course, unless you're, a, unless you're a Hannibal Lecter fan, then it would work in your... But, well, see, technically... And I was thinking of you different can, kind of planting meat. Yeah, you can grow them, but you can't eat them. See? <laughs> So Hannibal's take. I gotta, I gotta get my mind out of that section, okay? Because <laughs> it, it's the guttery section. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, Miss Mary. We will come back to reality in just a moment. But no, I'm serious. We have serious fucking problems coming in the not too distant future, and not necessarily where we are at, but in other places. Yeah. Okay, well, to me, what I'm seeing is these idiots on the Internet, the only thing they're posting that they want us to know about is pretty much useless crap. The stuff I really want to know about, I can't find. I have to talk to other people that actually live there. Yeah, it's kind of like that useless crap that I was telling you about with, with uh, voting to make D.C. a state. And the first thing that popped into my mind when I saw that was, uh, wait a minute, they're admitting the District of Columbia is not part of these United States. They're freaking admitting it with, with having a vote to de make it the 51st state. They've never and denied it. They've never no said it, it wasn't a state or it was. They've never added know, it to them. So what's the point? I know. They never yeah. have. And that's the thing. Everybody just assumed and now that they're saying, well, we're going to make fit for state, and everybody's going, oh, bullshit, it's because you want to control votes, and you want to get more Senate seats, and you want this, and you want that. And I'm thinking, hello, hello. Wow, you're they excited. admitted to you that the seat of government for the federal government is not part of these United States. No, it's a and foreign so power. therefore, any kind of decrees, mm. any kind of edicts, mm. any kind of rules, regulations, laws that they throw down, that they write out and have their special little stamp of approval on, they consider them applicable only to those who are residents of the United States. Mm. But, seeing as how they aren't, they don't apply to them. Right. And nobody seems to get that. Well, that's not I, really the popular part of the reading either. You're being a little bit mm, uppity with your insider trading knowledge, Miss Mary. Well, I'm not trying to be uppity, but it's one of those things where do you see the elephant in the room? Can you not smell the massive dump that it just left in the middle of the living room? I'm still trying to figure out why people want to wear masks. And you're asking me these questions? I'm oh. sorry. People. I'm so confused. And, and that's another one of those mm. things. They're telling you wear a mask. Mm. They're basically saying you're all robbers. Because only robbers wear bank or wear masks. Not anymore. Only only criminals wear masks. So now they're getting you to walk around and advertise. I'm a good little sheeple and I'm a criminal. I'm well, a mask. yeah, but the the person doing it does not see the shit you see. No, they're, they don't. They're and in a the they're in a bucket of shit with their mouth covered, their hands gloved, their eyes closed, and the only source of input they take is from the evening news, which is basically just shit leaking into their ears. That's why you're so surprised that people don't know DC is not 
part of the United States, and I'm so used to it, I'm surprised they don't. It is an outside no. foreign entity. It doesn't belong. It's like a cancer, similar to that. And we've been fueling it and fueling it and fueling it. It's a virus. Oh, here we go. Okay. It's a virus. It's infecting us all. You, you know, like that Corona oh, here COVID we go. shit. Don't start pumping up that virus crap. It's just a bunch of nonsense. But, but, but it's a computer virus. It has infected the minds of millions of people. Oh, that one. Uh, I thought you yeah. were playing that stupid Corona crap. And it's still going to play. They're still they're going to do a phase two, and they've got so many just dumbasses, terrified. And once you get stupid, and you're in fear, you can't get out of it. I don't know how to get somebody out of that. That's in it. It's too late. You you can't. You cannot no. get somebody else out of it. No. All you no, can no, do no. is just kind of lay a trail of breadcrumbs or mm. plant some seeds. Other than that, mm. they got to dig themselves out of that hole. Yeah. Well, you know, the other day. I was walking to the grocery and back. I, I like my little walk. And it, coming back from the store, I, I passed, they got a gas station uh, thing in the parking lot. No attendant, just you go in and you put your cards in and shit. And the, I'm staring at this guy's car. He's got a 1962 red convertible Thunderbird. It's got to be Ooh, yeah, 18 foot long car convertible two seater with the plates on the back covering the two seats. Anyway, as I'm walking up to the guy and then I, I'm just amazed at his car and I look and I say, I didn't know it took diesel. And he stops pump, the pump and goes, oh, my God, my other car is a diesel. I forgot. <laughs> and we're both standing there and he said, I think it's the it's if it was a diesel and you put gas in that, you'd have to drain it. But I'm not positive if you put diesel in this engine, if you just add your regular, if it won't, shouldn't be too awful bad for it. <laughs> but I neither of us, yeah, neither of us were, it's so, it's such a, but his problem was, he saw, oh my God, my other car is a diesel and I forgot. <laughs> and he just got this vintage monster. Yeah. Well, isn't that the reason why the nozzles are different sizes? Well, yeah, but he... a diesel nozzle isn't supposed to fit in a regular gasoline engine. Oh, well, over here, they, fuel. I guess it fit It fit the tank. I saw him pull I saw him pull it out in panic because I said, wow, diesel, huh? And, oh, my other car is a diesel. I'm so used to that, I forgot to change. So, But because I interrupted you know, him, I caught him early before he filled it all up. Ah, hmm. well, it'll it'll run not so good for a while. Yeah, if that's he what just he got a little bit in there. Yeah. But did you know farmer was reading on his when he got home he they're harvesting right mm. now. Mm. Middle of wheat harvest, mm. EPIA cow patty, which means he gets home somewhere between ten thirty and eleven thirty at night. But yeah. Mm. Long days. Yeah. In any case he was, you know, winding down, having a little bowl of ice cream, checking out some shit on his phone, and he went, Holy crap California's wanting to make it illegal to have a diesel engine as of the year 2045. It will be illegal to own a diesel engine. Illegal. <laughs> and I thought, oh, dear Lord. See, that's what government's for. Is to and What they do is they get us hooked on these shitty products that are second rate. And they make our lives simpler, but they're bad for us. And then they go, well, you can't have them anymore. We've made them illegal. What? Well, for your protection, you dumb shit. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, wait. They get away with poisoning us. But then, well, we'll fix it in 25 years. <laughs> so. uh, 25 years. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> we Down live, the road. We you live. won't still be here. But the next crop oh, that's coming up, yeah. yeah they, won't ha they won't even be allowed to have that. Mary, we live amongst... Butt nuggets and weirdos. I am sure of it. I am positive of it at this moment. Well, it's obvious because the last POTUS was a dangleberry, so, you know. Oh, uh, yeah, don't. Yeah, POTUS, Shimotus. Poor guy. He was, though. I, he still is. He's a dangleberry. Well, I don't know what he is. I know what I don't like about him, but I never liked anything about him. So, I got called a racist all the time. Oh, you don't like him because you're a racist. Uh, no, I don't like presidents. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what promises they make. 
I want to know what bankers behind him. <laughs> I didn't like him because I just mm-hmm. didn't like him. There was something, you know, even the first time I mm-hmm. saw him before he started talking, I went, what a Weasley little, who is this guy? Mm-hmm. And then I heard him talk and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, frick. And my narcissist alert in the back was going, danger, danger, <laughs> danger. <laughs> and I thought, ooh, which would be voice? I had to challenge voice. Which would be voice? The Dangleberry narcissist or the Arkansidal narcissist? Oh, come Ooh. on. You name one of those POTUS pricks that wasn't a narcissist, please. Kennedy was a... In his personal life, the guy was a bag of shit. Okay? So, mm, sorry. I got. I have my social limits that I consider mm, a code. And if you promise somebody something and you break your promise, you're a fucking bag of shit. The way, if it if it's done, you know, deceptively, not innocently. Oops, my clothes fell off and, oh, I thought it was you. <laughs> How did I know it wasn't you, honey? It, she looked just like you. But, uh-huh. no, well, come on, please. I know, I know. Well, I hold that uh, that idea, that concept. Highly. I think if you promise somebody you're going to do something, do it. How hard is it to not do shit, really, when you think about it? Well, and that's, you know, kind of for me, it's like, okay, if you're no longer, you know, into it with your spouse or whomever that you have a long-term relationship with, instead of going around behind their back and cheating, just get a freaking divorce or separate or whatever the hell and get it over with. Or build Be another honest. room and move her in. Ha, 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 ha. Be freaking honest about it. Yeah. Good God. Well, you know, if, you, if you're just not into them anymore. See, then... I, so on one level, the man was a, he was a good fellow with his politics in some areas, a piece of shit in others. So... You can't hold that seat and please everybody. Never going to happen. So why have the seat at all? Okay. Then why in the fucking world do you want the seat at all? Why not find a better way? See, and that's, to me, that's, that's the big question. Why do you want someone in that position that is willing to spend all that of everybody else's money to get into that position? (laughs) <laughs> Why? <laughs> no. <laughs> Trump played that yeah, one, though. That he didn't. Again, it's a yeah. Groucho Marx thing. Why would I want to be a member of a group that would have me as a member of their group? Right, but it also, in, in another light, it proves there's no such thing as voting. <laughs> voting is a story, people. It's a nice story, and it makes you feel good, but no such thing. See, I think the real voting is you vote with your dollars. No, that's if you don't like the way a business does business, then you don't do business with that business. They shut down how many fucking businesses in America, and the billionaires got rich. So no, because they were too big to fail. Right, because they got their damn bailout from the government, and we the people are supposed to be the government, but we the people are fucking idiots. Well, it's because we've fallen for the mafioso tagline of. For, it's for your protection. Oh, yeah. For national security. You must pay these fees. But you're free. But you must pay these fees. But you are free. Oh. No, I'm not. It costs me daily. Trust me. Uh, did you see Cirque's link yesterday about the kids going around in the trucks celebrating their graduation from high school? I did see her say something in the chat earlier today. Uh, yesterday, she put link, uh, yesterday, she put links up of the trucks. These, and today, they one rode by and the kids were mooning us. <laughs> oh, how funny. <laughs> They're still carrying it on over another day. Well, they were supposed to just do it yesterday, but I saw a truck pass by when uh, I was talking to you. Or before that, when before I called you. And Cirque oh. goes, oh, look, the kids are mooning us. <laughs> Blue moon. <laughs> yeah, but see, all this coronavirus crap, it just depends on the government and the news service you're hearing that represents it, what you're going to hear. Because I, sp- I went down to the bar this morning for a couple beers when I did my shopping, 
and people just elbow to elbow at the tables, all crowded together, no masks. Everybody's just like nothing ever happened. Okay, now if people are wearing masks and they moon you, are is the the uh, identifying process going to be something like what it was in the movie Porky's? How could I tell you the answer? They don't wear masks here. I've been telling you this for months. Well, I'm just I'm putting that out there. It's a rhetorical kind of thing. Ah, rhetorical. I don't do rhetorical. I don't even know how to spell rhetorical. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't give me those big fancy words. You know, the, slow me down. Uh, Adrian! <laughs> anyway. Ah, there's Hannah and Cirque returning from the beach. Oh, Sock says he has no COVID app on his sail fawn. Well, a sail fawn? Is that like a windy do- deer or a windy doe? Windy doe, doe de doe, doe. Yeah, moving along. These intrusive government people will find a way. They'll just wear us down. Yeah. The only way I've learned to fight the phone is by not participating in a phone. And although it does piss Cirque off a little bit, because there are those, ah, I want to ask him something, and he's, yeah, there, no phone. But I saw, uh, saw a link yesterday with my one of my favorite drummers, Mr. Charlie Watts, and he is like that, too. No cell phone. He says it drives Mick crazy when he's trying to get a hold of him. <laughs> They gotta send it to the girl, and the girl writes it on a note and brings it to him. And, he, and then he tries to call it back, and he misses him. <laughs> Just like when we were young, how it used to be. Uh huh. And we were so cool with all that, you know. Ah oh, man, I missed you by ten minutes last night. Shit. Oh well. Now oh, we're. Oh God. Yeah. And did you ever do the fun, you know, calling people and saying, "Is your refrigerator running?" Well, then you better catch it, because you know, back in the day, you could do that shit. You know, and laugh and hang up, and they didn't yeah. know who in the hell it was that called. No, I Nowadays, was way different. Nowadays, you got caller ID. I was way <laughs> different than that. I was a phone salesman in my uh, late teens, so hmm, I had more in in care. What would you call it? More adult ways to be a smart ass on the phone. Well, I was a smart ass on the phone too, but then my dad was on the other end of the phone, <laughs> and I had to stop it. <laughs> Because I used to, I used to answer the phone calls. Residents number one call girl speaking, and Dad was on the other end of the line. And oh, mm. he was. Needless to say, when he got home a couple of days later, he was still pissed. It was his last name, but apparently he did not find it amusing. It was oh yeah, as amusing as I did. Well, and still do, you weirdo. Yes, I do. You know, <laughs> you know what I don't have. What. I don't have any idea what's going on in the world right now. It's so chaotic. It's like everybody everywhere in the next place is doing something different from the other place. There is no unity at all. No, you don't follow that concept? Did I lose you? Well, okay. No, I'm still here. I'm just trying to take them. Hey, Lady Cycle. Yell a little louder, Mary. Y'all, oh, so it'll uh, come out your other ear? Yeah, no, it might come out my ass. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Let me listen. Try again, Mary. Oh, I'll listen. Oh, no. Hi, <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Hi, sir. Oh. So that would be cool. So instead uh, of you talking out your ass, I'd yeah. be able to talk out your ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, come on. on. I even got Hannah on that one. Damn. So. I better floss my teeth after that. No, uh, we have a case. neighbor. We have a car parked in front of the house, and she's protecting us from the evil. Uh, see, Hannah protects you against strange cars. <laughs> whenever a butterfly farts. Butterfly farted. Butterfly farted. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well, I don't know, but we had a delivery guy mistaken a delivery here, so the dog's crazy when stuff like that goes on. Well, I understand that. Hey. And my doggies are outside. Yeah. Well, did I? I don't know if I had you on the uh, radio when I I had a delivery from a guy, Turkish guy, and he delivers here on a regular thing when we order from this company, and he speaks Turkish, Danish, English. So when he he gets to drop here, he likes to stop and yak for a few minutes. Did mm-hmm. I mention any of that before to you? Is it familiar? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, well, he was not familiar. Uh, this is like a month and a half ago or two. And he wasn't familiar with the America's, what? 
because I was telling him they're writing that at that period they just started the Antifa crap going on. And he says, no, I haven't heard anything. I I watch the news, don't see none of that. So I said, you got to find it on the internet. <laughs> so when the next time I order from him, he'll come back and I get an update. And if I hadn't grown up in the period of time that I did, I wouldn't be comfortable with waiting for the messenger to return. Hmm. I don't live in that instant freaking coffee world that people have sh tried to shove up my ass my whole fucking life. They want it yesterday. It's not fast enough. And all, fuck you. I do it when I get to it. You do it when I get to it. Oh, and here's my wife trying to bully boss me around on the phone live. Yeah? Be gone, live wife. <laughs> hey. What? I saw this on Twitter. What? Shit, I've lost my white privilege. I've looked everywhere, had cushions off the sofa, looked on top of the cupboards, under the bed, mm. and even in the U-bend of the toilet. If you see it on your travels, please let me know. Holy smokes, somebody lost their white privilege. Well, you know, there is a certain amount of truth to this white privilege crap that people harp about, but it's not, I see it, but not the way they see it. They're trying to say things like, oh, you get better opportunities in life, like for things that really don't matter, you know. But they seem to matter at the time, like education and shit like that. What, what the truth of it is, if you're a traveler, and you get treated way better being a, a white than you do being dark. As an example. Yeah, well, in my traveling life, I've had way more success than not. But I've seen other people of color not be so successful with their travels. And I always thought it was, well, they pay more attention. That's what they're trained to do. Let the white guy go on by and pick on that nigger over there. And that's where they are. That's where they always have been. And pretending they're not the them that I'm speaking of. You know, yeah. and you could justify it with shit like TSA, who just butt rapes anybody that they can get their hands on. Or the police. Yeah. But there's other levels of society that we engage that don't have TSA and police. And those people do treat white folks. Go, go into a grocery store and watch. You'll see it if you look for it. It's something you need to, to, to see in a certain light. And it's... Oh, come on, Hannibal. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited. Yes. Uh, they're, well, we've got all the windows open because it's so warm here right now. And she's as, I don't know, sensitive. What do you classify as warm? Uh, about 80, 75 to 80. Oh, uh, okay. Because the humidity makes it seem like 10 degrees hotter. Well... My computer says it's 81 here with 54% humidity. But mm. we had thunderstorms roll through last night, too. So. Mm. Well, it's not bad or anything. It's just the humidity makes me um, less I'm active. Melting. Yeah. Melting. Some, something similar to that. But anyway, so the dog threw me off whatever I was harping about. I lost my mind. You lost your train of thought. No, my mind. I don't have a train of thought. I just have a mind. And when I figure out how it works, you guys are all in trouble. <laughs> hmm. Because <laughs> hmm. uh, I'm going to figure out how to survive politics. And when I do, I'm going to write a book. <laughs> no, I'm joking. You, right. know, you know how to survive politics seriously? Uh, ignore it. Yeah, and that's pretty much the only way you can. Oh, but you had brought up that Washington, D.C. has never been a state. Of course not. Washington, the District of Columbia. Do a little reading. Anyhow, we have 50 states, children, and Washington, the District of Columbia. Oh, that. See, so statehood, hmm, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. Why would they even... They're just stalling the collapse, dear. Any story, they, these people are, are desperate. Okay, all this Antifa shit and taking over parts of Seattle, they already gave it back. <laughs> what? That was the shortest, shortage take, shortest takeover in the history of the world. 
I've well, been at concerts that lasted longer than Antifa taking over Seattle. <laughs> Just joking. It's a joke. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, I've been in a dance contest that lasted mm-hmm. longer, but mm-hmm. what the hell? Well, you get the point. Yes. Yeah. Ah, see, Frog says, one district to rule them all. Well, that's the way it's always been, because they what they did to us is, they once upon a time, it was common knowledge, state trumped Fed. The state is the boss, not the, not the federal government. And then over a period of years, they did the 9-11 thing and just wiped all that state Trump's Fed shit right out of the way and said, oh, look at this. We have new laws. <laughs> oh, you don't have a constitution. Don't worry about that. We're, we're under attack. We're, we're protecting you. And, oh, and Miss Kate says that people that live in D.C. do still have to pay taxes and their vehicle license plates say taxation without representation. Uh, hmm. Still, so that makes them a special. And it's ten Definitely. square miles in the first place, and the people that live there are not the people that represent you. So good luck. It's all a scam. This whole thing, all of it, every fucking idea we've been raised with, every reality we think is important, it's all bullshit. Well, yeah. And I think what proved that to me was. Well, I see daily on the interwebs how this governor of this state wants to have the lockdowns extended until 2045. And this governor of this state, hey, where you don't want to do any of that. Why, why are they divided? Why is, how can you possibly be divided over something that could kill people? Because you're not. It's a big performance. We're being lied to. Well, you know, it's kind of like um, when a musician is doing a concert and say, okay, now this next this next one you guys are going to sing, and I just want to hear from the people on the left for the first <laughs> line, and the people on the right for the second line, and the people in the middle for the third line, and then all of you together for the for the chorus of it. And, you know, the first line is pretty loud, and the second line is pretty loud, and the third line is pretty loud. And then when you get to the chorus, it's... It's, They just plain can't get their shit together when everybody has to get their shit together. Oh. Well, yeah, it's because there's too many people trying to do it. They need smaller groups. It's the only thing that's going to save anybody that gets saved through this entire hoopla that we're entertaining. It's going to be because they're in a small community. And that's the only way that the future is going to be a good thing for you. Otherwise, if you're crowded and elbow to elbow, you're screwed. So, mm, elbow n- to elbow. Yeah, now we're going to play this game in, in the world called tell, tell the Truth. Tell a lie. Tell the truth. Tell a lie. Back and forth, back and forth. And it, it just doesn't matter what they say as long as they keep talking Because they never tell the complete truth. And we have people who are hopeful and they vote and they believe that these people have their best interests in heart and all this stupid stuff that they need to grow the fuck out of. You know, the negative side is ugly and shit, but it's real. And you probably engage it more than you want to admit, you know, because when we're out in the physical world, I think we're all a little defensive to a degree. No. Even when you well, feel we safe, have our defenses up, yes. yeah. Even when you're comfortable and you feel safe, if if a uh, some gets knocked off the table, do you not jump and be, and be, wow, get startled? Ah, who? Yeah. You know, or when you're sitting barefoot and the cat thinks that she want he wants to play with your toe. <laughs> uh, yeah. See, yeah. The little things in life, reality, and it just it doesn't mean you're a pussy. It just means that hey, I wasn't expecting that. But we've been we've been trained to go, well, if you don't stay put while the guns go off, you're a coward and all this nonsense. They've they've dumbed us down, numbed us down, and then I smoke weed as much as I possibly can. And I don't think that my smoking makes me feel less. I think it makes me understand what I feel. Hmm. Well, okay. I get accused of a lot of things by a handful of people on the, you know, sites that I uh, chat in, and some people are dead set against my smoking practices. They have my best interests at heart, 
and they want me to know that I'm a fucking loser, pothead, and that my life is not worth anything because of that. So, okay. Yeah. But it's, you know, just because somebody speaks does not make anything true, but it is something that if I was like, mm, cared about it, <laughs> I could get upset. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, yeah, I have I people confront me in these ways over something as helpful as cannabis. So, is it But tough? that's because of years of indoctrination. And I understand that. So, I, I let that slide. That's not why I block certain people. It's not the insults. It's the other stuff they do. <laughs> the insults I like. They make me laugh. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, my you self know, esteem were, goes up eight hundred percent when somebody calls me a stupid pothead on the on an internet site. That shows me what they really are. Hmm? Watch your back. Watch your back. Oh hey, you know what we need on this Dork Table podcast, Miss Mary? What's that? We could probably stand an update on your uh, recovery from your hyenas accident. Um, well, I had my, uh, appointment with the doctor on Wednesday and I have been given the all clear to start going to the chiropractor and basically he said that the vertebrae have healed. Just take it easy. Don't overdo, hmm. which you know me after I got off the phone, it was like cartwheel time, although I didn't do a cartwheel because I haven't done a cartwheel in years and I would probably hurt myself hmm. worse. But I did go out and play in the garden, and and do, and then I came inside for the afternoon and went, oh, I overdid it. But yeah, I'm I am on the mend, on the mend. Yeah, you sound good too, back. and you sound strong. You know, people give their self away with their voice. And cool. You sound yeah, you sound normal. Whatever no, I, people don't like that word. My normal, uh, consistent, like you've always sounded. But cool. ap well, after a trauma like that, it kind of gives you you know weak little weak behavior. Like in the beginning, you were a little shady. Uh, yeah, I yeah. You're back. And, and you sound a hundred percent better. So yeah, you know, and you know, talking with people that. So what exactly happened? And you have to kind of explain it to them. Then I notice I catch I get a little bit of a catch because it's like wow. I I'm one of those people that I relive this this shit mm. every time I have to, and so. So I have a very vivid, very active imagination. Mm. So, yes. Mm. But in any case, you were saying something earlier mm. about the truth and a lie. And it reminded me of something that I saw a week or so ago. And I don't know if I ever brought it up on the radio or not. But um, according to a 19th century legend, the truth and the lie met one day. And the lie says to the truth, it's a marvelous day today. Well, the truth looks up at the skies and sighs for the day is really beautiful. They spend a lot of time together, ultimately arriving at a well, and the lie tells the truth, the water is very nice. Let's take a bath together. And the truth, once again suspicious, tests the water and discovers that, indeed, it is very nice. So they undress and they start bathing, and suddenly the lie comes out of the water, puts on the clothes of the truth and runs away. Well, the furious truth comes out comes out of the well and runs everywhere to find the lie and to get her clothes back. But the world, seeing the truth naked, turns its gaze away with contempt and rage. The poor truth returns to the well and disappears forever, hiding therein in shame. Since then, the lie travels the world dressed as the truth, satisfying the needs of society because the world, in any case, harbors no wish at all to meet the naked truth. <laughs> yeah. uh, good one. <coughs> you know what I have for you? What's that? A dork question. Okay. And, and I'm going to preface it with a, a little tale, Okay. Now, you know, when you go to a bar that you, rec you regular or some establishment where people are openly verbal and they hey you when you come in? Uh-huh. I, I, I've, I've attained that status at my local alcohol brewery. 
system thing. So you're the norm? <laughs> I, I'm one of many. No, no, no. The, these people, they, they're kind to everybody the same. They, they judge your behavior on your deeds, not your reputation or your appearance. So there's others that, you know, way more regular than me. But I, I've gotten into that where I come in and they yell across the room. So. Lou! And instead of Norm! No, it's Louis. They, they use the French <laughs> oh, name. Oh, Louis. Yeah. yeah. A Louis, a Louis. Well, it's kind of nice. <laughs> it, it gave me a, a question that I wanted to ask you because there's different ways um, to treat people that do what you say. You know, like when you order a drink. When you order a meal, now I know you personally more, you know, more than some people with this radio thing. So I know you're you give them what they give you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, but do you really like those who do what you say? Uh, do I really like, as in? Do you like hmm. people doing what you tell them to do? Or do you just, are you ca casual with your, re, you know, your requests? How do you do it? Because I can ask for a beer in a nice way, and I could be a prick and say it rude and nasty, too, and then still get the beer. Oh, and see, okay, if I, because I haven't been to a bar, you know, okay, but the ones that are like restaurants mm. that also sell alcohol mm. in forever. All right, but, but still, do you like... Usually, well, when I go, when they come over and they bring a menu or whatever, I just look at them and say, yes, please, one of everything, <laughs> and that will get them giggling, and then I'll go, okay, what do you recommend? Because okay, quite seriously, yeah. I look at it and I go, yes, please, one of everything. Mm. <laughs> and it breaks the ice again. <laughs> it gets them, you know, to giggling and in a fun kind of, but a lot of the places that I go to anymore, they'll go, do you want the usual? Because I do have a couple of places that I have a usual. Um, and then um, there's other places it's like, what are you going to try different this time? Because they just have so many different choices on their menu that it's like, okay, this time I'm going to try this, and next time I'm going to try, oh, wait, that really looks good too. I can't decide. <laughs> well, so I improved my that's question. That's kind of the way I do. I know, but I improved my question because I – don't think I made it quite clear what I was leaning towards. What I'm saying is, do you like people better when they do what you say? Huh? It's a weird question because there's times when other people just doing shit because you told them to. I don't respect that. <laughs> and then there's times where that person needs to be doing that because if it, they don't shit's going to happen you know it's a weird i know it's a weird question that probably didn't work out so well <laughs> that's why we're well, at the okay. door table we can work this out okay so if somebody does something for me mm -hmm. because i asked them to or because i told them to mm -hmm. uh it's one of those it depends on the circumstances yeah you know, like if I'm being a total butt munch, which there have been, oh. I I can wear that label oh, okay. from time to time, like Good. if I'm cranky or something. Yeah. yeah. And if they snap back at me and go, damn, what crawled up your ass, <laughs> I appreciate that. Okay. I appreciate people telling me, uh, excuse me, mm. really? Mm. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was quite a bit rude there, yeah. wasn't I? Because it happened. So yeah. I do appreciate people calling me out on my bullshit because mm -hmm. I'm human. I, I have those moments, yeah. but you know, when somebody, when I, and I try not to tell somebody, go do this, go do that. It's usually, would you mind? Right. And that was more or less what I was trying to say. I just didn't word it properly the first time. Oh, <laughs> I had oh, to yeah. evolve into a better question, but I had yeah, to start. I'm more of yeah. a, would you mind? Yeah. helping me or yeah. doing this while I finish this up or whatever. Because, uh -huh. you know, I don't I don't like ordering people around. I didn't like doing that when my kids were little. Mm. I mean, there were times when I told them, do you it! Clean up your bedroom, <laughs> clean up the bedroom, or I'm coming in with a trash bag. And anything that's still on the floor is gone. Mm. 
And I had to do that a few times and because my kids are slow learners like their mother. And so, you know, when they realize that mom's not giving us that back, I better clean up my room when she tells me to clean up my room. So, you know, they had instant consequences, Mm -hmm. I guess is what it was. And then when it got to the point where it's like, would you mind going cleaning up your room because such and such, (laughs) such. Yeah. And then they would just go. It wasn't an edict from on high. It was a, (laughs) would you mind? Seriously? So, you know, I just, I don't like divvying out orders, I guess. Yeah. Well, that's kind of what I figured, but so I will take it as a no. You do not like people better when they do what you say. You like them better when they're Would honest, you? no matter how what the no matter what the end result is. Cuz uh, controlling life is it's such a fine thing. We don't think we're doing it, but we are, you know. It, uh, it's a matter of uh, interpretation, I think, on that one. No. Well, see, it's like what is, I have a meme somewhere on this computer. I can't ever <laughs> find it when I want it. Um, yeah. It says controlling others is power. Whoa. Controlling yourself is strength. True. Oh yeah, man. Did I? I think Cirque's taught me that lesson over the years. Yeah. You know, like being mad. I can be mad all I fucking please, but what is what? purpose does it serve? Am I looking for a response or an answer? Am I trying to make something better? No, I'm just sitting here pissed off. So I decided I could stop being mad if I don't want to be mad. It's up to me. Yeah. There you go. So the best way to for me to, to end confrontation is just walk off somewhere for 10 minutes. And by the time I get back, I don't even remember what I was upset about. Yeah. It's the well, weird... See, yeah. when- yeah. yeah, when I was younger, I used people would always go, "Man, I am so depressed. Can you help me get them?" And I look at them like, "I hate being depressed. Therefore, I don't allow myself to be depressed." Right. And they always gave me this weird look, and mm. and I would have to explain to them, "I do not like the way I feel when I get that way, and so therefore, I don't allow myself to say that way. I do something to get me out of those doldrums." Because I and I really I'm still I do not like being depressed and I admit mm-hmm. I have moments where I, especially after the accident I yeah be a oh, wow. mopey shit because sure. I couldn't get up by yeah. myself I couldn't a lot of things I couldn't do by myself got past so all of I, it so, yeah. yeah so I was very mopey and pissy <laughs> sure and you know then I would go okay. Put up your big girl panties. Oh, wait a minute. I need help with that yet, too. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but bless his heart, the farmer was so wonderful. And, and it would be, you know, it got to where it was joke time. Funny, yeah. You know, and even, yeah, and even yeah. when it hurt to laugh. Yeah. Still, don't, yeah. Make, don't make me laugh. Yeah. Don't, don't make me laugh. But, yeah. So, and he's pretty much the same way. He doesn't like being mad. He doesn't like feeling no depressed. it's horrible yeah and but so a lot a of decision times when we can he's make. having a day that make that he's starting to feel that anger or that whatever mm-hmm. then he shoots me a text and i send something back to him that's just <laughs> <I'm not laughs> silly. and it brings him out of his uh, doldrums yeah so. secret code for um, cha-cha snaps or something i suppose Usually, well, with us, it's and it really I'm is kind you. of a I, running joke, yeah. and and nobody else gets it. But we'll look at each other and go, "What are you doing?" And then both of us will just <laughs> stop the guy laughing. But it's it's a private joke kind of thing. Not it's anymore. You yard. just told us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so either that or are you going squirrely? Oh. And uh, occasionally, which we've gotten lots of really funny looks from my family, but they're used to us now. But oh go, yeah, Mister, sure. I'm yeah. gonna smack you right on the kisser. Yeah, and yeah, everybody yeah. turns and looks, and then I go up and <laughs> plant a kiss on him, and they're going, "Oh, I get it." Day and night. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyway, I got I got another question for you to rant on. You might enjoy this one. Okay. Okay, and I'm gonna start. I'm gonna tell another story first before I tell you. The question. Okay. So the other night, um, 
I guess Cirque was oh Cirque was out at, at in the city and she was going out after work and then coming back. And it was about I don't know maybe seven or eight o'clock and I'm making myself a cup of tea, doing a little tidying up in the kitchen area. And my timing was so horrible that night. Just as I'm putting the thing behind the kettle, all of a sudden the click and it, the steam starts boiling out the top just as I uh-huh. pass my hand over it. But I want to put this thing down without, you know, making a bigger mess. So here I am being patient, put the thing down, pull my hand away. And I got a, a burn about the size of a silver dollar, but it's not round, but it's about that size. If you, you know, if it was round, it'd be that big. And here I've got Cirque coming home, you know, for after work, and I don't want to tell her nothing and have her all freaked out. So <laughs> I just um, let it go. The uh-huh. ne- very next day, I go to the bar. Well, all, all these years, I've been telling Anna Maria down at the bar, I never go to the doctor. No, 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 no. You'd have to hit me with a car to get me to, to be in a position to need medical. So here I burn my arm, and I showed her. But coconut oil, <laughs> it's not a real serious. It's just from the steam from a, a hot kettle. So I didn't, you know, I think, what is that? First degree when they, they don't even blister. It just turns kind of like a red. Uh-huh. Yeah, put some coconut oil on that. So here I've got my chance to go out into a public place, talk to somebody I know, and show them physical proof that, you know, anytime something goes wrong, I don't go running off to the doctor. Because I already know some remedy that I learned on the internet or through my pal Mary, so I don't need all that stuff. So my question to you, how do I get sick? How do you get sick? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because I got burnt and all that, but I put coconut oil right away. So, you know, when you hurt yourself right after that, you're prone to get some shit happen, catch flu, da-da-da. Yeah, right? because your resistance is down. Whether it's mm. whether you allow yourself to get down emotionally because of what's going on around you or people around you or what you're reading on the Internet or whatever, whenever, you're, whenever you lower your vibration, you open yourself up to bad juju coming in, basically. So, you know, and and burning your arm mm-hmm. is kind of was kind of an inattentive kind yeah of thing. i felt it's, foolish and irresponsible like a dumbass oh crap how did i do that but i laughed see, it off but then all that self-talk mm-hmm. on top of it you just kind of you know built on the inattentiveness because you said what a dumbass how did i let myself do that instead of hur, hur, hur. well i guess i earned that one you know, yeah, yeah. Basically. Your self talk is yeah. really important and people don't people don't realize and I'm I'm finding this more and more and more, especially and I have to remind myself mm-hmm. and the farmer and especially my mom right now with her healing process yeah. is don't say I'm sick, I feel like crap, I'm this, I'm that, I'm so dumb, I can't remember anything. Stop saying that. Instead say, Wow. Wonder if I was distracted. Wonder if I'm not focusing well. You know, and wonder instead of saying I am, because when you say I am, you are owning whatever it is that you am at the time. So you agree with the way I did this? Yeah. Okay. I just, I I will, I was hoping to get your support. Yeah. Because these things, they're, they're dangerous, you know, and I'm not a doctor and all that kind of crap. But, you know, the internet said put some coconut oil and then throw gauze on it. But I like the air to heal shit. I don't like yes. I don't like the feeling of band aids. Air and you know air and sunshine. And if I got a cut, I find electrical tape works really good for um you know, hazard ha- little hazards. Not anything. Like if you cut your finger off, that would be different. But these little scrapes and shit you might have working or doing gardening or crap, catch a thorn somewhere, whatever might happen. There's there's all these other things that are right at my fingertips to fix them with, and I don't need to cry to some doctor every time I have a boo-boo. See, and that's that's one of those vicious circle things that's been, you know, 
steadily getting worse and worse and worse over the years because it, you know, it used to be that you didn't go to the doctor's office unless you were sick. And, and if you, and then with me, it was like, I'm not taking my kids to the doctor's office because there's sick people in there. Well, then people started going, well, I don't want to go to the doctor's office because there's all those sick people in there. So I'm just going to take my kid to the emergency room, which oh, yeah. some of that yeah. is, you know, the insurance wouldn't cover the doctor's visit, <laughs> but it would yeah. cover an emergency, emergency room visit. Yeah. So then people started taking, oh, my child's got a fever, got to go to the emergency room. Instead of going to the doctor or looking up on the Internet or calling the doctor's office or whatever, and right now they have all these little trauma centers or whatever where you can the quick pop in and, and get your pills and get out of there kind of thing. Mm. But it just it started escalating from there. You well, know, um, can I use... when I was a kid, mom used to just call a doctor's office yeah. and the doctor would say, oh, don't bring your kids in here. I don't want your sick kids coming yeah, into the but... waiting room, so I'll stop by on the way home. Can we use your, huh. your accident that you just had? Because this is fresh. Everything's happened recently. And I, I'm more interested on top of it. I'm so curious about how did you mentally handle the last, how long has it been now? About two months? Three months? Three months. Three months. Okay. So from the beginning where you started, you're all freaked out. I just wrecked my car, blah, 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 to the moment you're at now. What has been the main uh, way the, that you succeeded to get where you are? What did you do? You know what I mean or not? Because um, being young well, is one thing, but now you're grown up, and these things just freshly happened three months ago, and you've come well, a long way. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it, I think, is I try to distance myself from anything that would bring me down emotionally. Oh, okay. Because if something brings me down emotionally, then I'm more susceptible to physical issues. Yeah. Another thing that I did was every chance I got, once I could get up and move... I got up and I moved, you know, even if it was just to step outside and take like 10 steps in the grass and then come back in, get up and move because your body needs to move. Um, I really credit a lot of it, especially these last couple of months to um, going outside and walking around barefoot mm, okay. or yeah. standing Grounded. in the yard yeah. barefoot or sitting in the, and I've got big patches of clover in the yard and I'll go out and just sit in those patches of clover. They're so spongy and so soft <laughs> and there's something very relaxing about sitting in that clover, you know, and your bare skin touching it. And so I'm getting the, the, uh, the balancing. Yeah. I believe this. I, I'm, I'm in tune with you for some reason. Yeah. Cause yeah. the, the earth yeah. Takes care, is a is a negative charge and the air is a positive charge and so when you are equally exposed to air and earth, it balances your charge in your system out so your body can heal better. And I really think that's a lot of it is is you know just not pushing it but moving and getting back in touch with the earth itself, not walking on the street, not any of that stuff, go out where you can get your bare feet in the grass and preferably grass that has not been treated with chemicals because the pores on the bottom of your feet are some of the largest pores on your body and anything that your feet step on that absorbs into your body. So try not to walk on grass that's been treated with chemicals, which is really hard to do unless you live by me. Come on over and walk in my grass because I don't treat it with chemicals. Yeah. So. I believe you too. I, I, you know, uh, what can you say? But you're surviving what some people don't survive. <laughs> this is huge to me. Well, it's huge, huge, huge. Yeah, and see, the farmer. That was another thing that he brought up last night. Was um, about an hour and a half from here, there was a head-on collision, and all seven people involved died. Yeah. Oh man. So, yeah. Yeah. So my my head on collision was very 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 
I, I, we were blessed. That's all I can say is yeah. we were blessed. How you put, well, you handled it Everybody walked away from yeah. their vehicles. Yeah. Everybody. Because you drove properly. Well, yeah, I was paying attention. See? But, Duh. Hmm. Well, anyway. You know, I think being addicted to COVID is like being addicted to heroin. I think it's that seriously fucking um, controlling. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder why. Because after what you just said about your state of mind, you under your understanding of if you're ill, what would you say percentage wise? Could you even come up with a number? How much of it is your in your head controlling your body? <laughs> All of it? <sighs> hmm. Uh, I'd say 99% of it is internal, not necessarily in the head, because you also have a brain in your gut, and um, well, you can't... I can't remember what it's called, but but hmm. there's there's a the vagus nerve, I think, is what it is, that connects from from your gut, your intestines, straight to your brain, and that vagus nerve, eighty percent of what goes on that vagus nerve comes from the gut up to the brain. Uh, well, I've been so it is an internal thing. Right, and I've been paying a lot of attention to the way I'm reading the children are getting treated through this COVID crap, right? So mm-hmm. over since I was a child, and now I'm grown up, I see the state has taken every freaking thing about being a human being away from the population. And the population, some of them are going, hey, wait a minute. But the majority is still, I'm afraid of the virus, save me. So we have this social split problem going on well and that i'm afraid of the virus you know there's an awful lot of people that are not necessarily afraid of the virus Hmm. but they want to keep their job because they were out of work for so long and so they were told in order for you to go back to work you have to wear a mask well that's where you say no my daughters yesterday Uh. were Mom, do you have what kind of oil can I use? Mom, what kind of oil can I use for the mask that they have to wear for work? Oh, no. And so I just sent my my youngest daughter the link to uh the doTERRA breathe oil, which I don't care for that recipe per se. Why don't you send her um, links I've, about what these masks really do to our health when we wear them for too much time? Well, and I have. I have sent those, but you know, trying to get through company policy well, if everybody that works for you has the same opinion about the truth instead of the story that you're shoving down their throat, I mean, that's what I mean is you can't support this shit willingly just to make a fucking dot. Well, and you can. People are going to. But to please me, the king of the dorks, I would just appreciate the fucking honesty. You know, of both sides, one side saying the fucking truth. Look, you're just a fucking mule. Do what I tell you or go somewhere else. Not, this is for your safety or your health. It's got nothing to fucking do with any of that. That's what I like. I think it was Faye Grimm that posted it. Yeah, it was over on realliberty.org, which if you're not a member of realliberty.org, come on over. Way cool alternative to fakey book but she posted a picture um tell you what i'll just go ahead and copy it and put i think i've already put it in the chat once yeah but i posted it over on facebook i posted it on twitter i post i think i posted it on mines um but yeah that mask is a placebo yeah yeah that's all it is yep and wearing a cloth mask to keep a germ, a virus, away from you is like putting up a chain link fence to keep the mosquitoes out. That's not, about how effective it is. Not to mention you're covered from head to toe, inside and out, in various forms of bacteria and germs in the first place. This is what we're made of. So for the system yeah. to take all the all the truth and distort it to this level and then shove these ignorant fucking things for us to all do like a bunch of idiots and and then to get so much compliance to do these ignorant things I, that's what pissed me off instead well, of wait wait, a, wait 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 range plan but in, right but instead of people arguing no you're not going to shut my business down 
they distracted the population with fucking riots funded by George Soros. Yeah. So we never yeah. heard anybody arguing with their state senator. Oh, no, you can't do this. We only heard the other side of the argument. So I'm really disappointed in the lack of fucking resistance to us because they didn't put up with it here. And I'm not, I'm in a communist freaking hellhole, remember? Yeah. Well, then I'm, I'm embarrassed for my own people in a foreign fucking country because they're idiots. Or their leadership is idiots and they refuse to stand against it and do what's best for everybody. They want the, there's this little group special, oh, the Jews this, oh, the niggers that, oh, the Mexicans this, Spicks this, blah, blah, blah. It's a fucking game. All of it. All of it. And I say that over and over to you. You must hate me by now. <laughs> nah. Well, I just... Mm. Wow. And I fall I fall into it occasionally as well. But mm. it's the whole stereotypical lumping people. How can you not fall? I fall into the fucking thing, but I... Know, see, I think it through. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, I... I have been channeling my inner Urkel quite a bit lately. Did I do that? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I yeah. did. It, but mine was burning my arm. Not so much wearing a mask, but it was the act of doing something stupid because I was in a rush to do something else. When I don't yes. normally behave that way, but for whatever reason, the stupid side of me took control and I got punished for it. I went, oh, man, that was dumb. Not... Oh, it was, you know, the dog made me do it. You know, the cat made me some blame, 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 blame. And I think if average Joe could get out of blaming everybody else for what he fucking does wrong, that would be a step forward. You know, just like you in the car accident, you understood the dynamics behind it go way beyond any one person's participation or control. It's just the yeah. results of a fucking thing. Well, eh, some things seem bigger than others. You burn your arm, you wreck your car. What's the fucking difference in the end, really? Something went yeah. wrong. Okay, one takes longer yeah. to heal than the other is about all I can see. Yeah? Well, and and the same thing holds true for both situations. Something mm -hmm. went wrong. Mm -hmm. You can either dwell on it, <laughs> wallow in it, or... <laughs> You can step up and go, wow, that's going to leave a mark, and then move on. Yeah, but you know, Grim called me a gump. <laughs> well, it's true. Well, okay. Well, and that's. Well, I, but you know what? Forrest Gump had some really intelligent lines. Mm. I mean, it it was someone that was supposedly, and that's another thing. Mm. You know, they always say these people are mentally challenged, and I'll tell you what, mm. I have had more Acme light bulb moments having a conversation with someone that's quote unquote mentally challenged than I have with someone that's got degrees, this fancy piece of paper hanging on their wall. Because you got your know it alls that don't know near as much as they think they know. <laughs> and then you've got these people that just flat out just spell, spill what's, what's going on inside their head. And yeah. you go, dude, seriously, that was like total epiphany time right there. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Ow. So. You know, it's it's wild. Those that are not going around assuming everybody's going to appreciate their greatness because they're so edumacated. Right. Those, yeah. Oh. Those man. that just you know flat ass call it as they see it. Oh yeah. Because they just flat ass don't know any better than to call it as they see it. Holy shit! I'd much rather have a conversation with someone that calls it as they see it as mm. opposed to. A mealy mouth, edumacated asshat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, I'm so undereducated; it's sad. But sadly, well, I understand the shit I read. I just don't have a piece of paper to show you that says some fucking guy in a robe did a dance naked under a tree and gave me a diploma. But that's what happens. You know what I never could understand the concept of something called higher learning. And higher learning is defined as that college is fucking expensive. And what I want to yeah. know is how do we get so duped into believing 
that there are levels of learning that require more money. What makes information or knowledge valuable to that degree? What are you finding out? And what they're telling you, it can't possibly be, they're learning how to be an engineer because they don't build anything worth a fuck. <laughs> okay? So maybe yeah. maybe they're going to that college to learn how to play the game in politics or religion or something else, business. But we're we're not told the truth about nothing in this life. Well, you know, it's funny. All those years that I worked at the car dealership and GM reps that we would have to deal with, and they all had to have a college degree, every one of them. And one of them that was the parts rep from GM, we had that one for like three years, had a degree in agriculture, had absolutely nothing to do with what he was doing for a, for a vocation, for a, a job or what have you. But he had a degree in agriculture. And I thought, so that's all you got to do is just get that piece of paper. So if I were to go to some, like, online school or if I were to do one of those, you know, back of a magazine things and get me a piece of paper, I could get hired on. Probably, depending on how you wrote your resume, it's like, holy shit. So you need to know how to write a resume, and you need to have a piece of paper with the fancy gold stamp on it. That's pretty much what it is. I don't want that kind of a job. If I have to go through that many flaming hoops to get that kind of a job, I don't yeah. want it. Yeah. Well, I just think that the idea that some knowledge, information, is valuable with a dollar sign attached to it, that's stupid. That is the is. height of... Okay, but these these are the people that are in control of the laws, control of the enforcement and the banks and all the shit we have to do, the food sources, and all the decisions are made by these fucking idiots that have enough money to go to school and get placed in positions to do what the banks tell them to do. And, and, and it's a cycle. We're stuck in it. We can't get out of it. The only reason mm. that those people are able to do mm. what they do is because the vast majority of the rest of us say, oh, okay, and just behave. Mm. Like, really? Seriously? That is asinine. I am not doing that. Behaving? That is asinine. You're not going to behave. Well, <laughs> the kidding. rules and regulations, well, yeah, I no. don't behave very well. But, no, you don't. Um, I know that. But, you know, a lot of the rules and regulations that are out there are just freaking asinine. But I know people that go along with them. Yeah, there, because that's the compliance. it's a rule, it's a law. Yeah. Comply or get the fuck out. Well, no, that's not freedom. That's not capitalism. That's not. I never earned a, a dollar in my life under those kind of terms and felt good about it Some bully yelling at me to hurry up and do something, if, eh, I usually just get up and fucking leave. Never go back. You, know, you, you finish the job, boy. <laughs> now you got a real problem. I might have to walk 12 yeah. miles to get the fuck home, but you know what? you got to do that shit all by yourself. And if mm -hmm. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> Watch me. Then I'd leave. I mean, it didn't happen constantly, but when it did, that's what I would do. People just yeah. uh There's a good way to handle people, and there's a bad way, and I think we all know what they are. But we just... You, some people get off on power, and they think it gives them something that they, they really don't deserve or have, and that's your compliance. <laughs> well, and if you ever notice, when you're, when you're talking about any kind of large corporation, mm -hmm. or actually any, any kind, of, kind business, of business, yeah, it's always the douche. That gets promoted. Always yeah, yeah. do. Because they'll do anything they're told to do without question. That's what they do. And stab yep. people in the back yep. in the process. And yeah. then, yeah. after they've stabbed them in the back, they send them the dry cleaning bill because <laughs> they bled on their shirt. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you imagine being a, somebody's friend at work and then firing them from their job? How how could you do that to your friend for anything? 
I mean, they're your friend. You put up with your friend's shit. That's what friends do. And we've been cheapened to this capital bullshit. You know, it's all for the job. It's all for the money. It's all for progress. No, it ain't. No, no, no. What really happens is shit goes on outside of you and people tell you stories about it and you get old and die. And there's your life. Because life is 99% boring as shit. And, you know, if you want excitement to drop that 99%, you got to go out and do it yourself. It doesn't come find you. Not everybody's Keith Richard, you know. <laughs> yeah. Some of us are just average, regular folk that, you know, we don't sparkle with a guitar or whatever the fuck. And people just, we're just everybody else, kind of. And then you got these people that are promoted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. You know what I didn't see any of these celebrities do in the last six months? What's that? Well, not any, but so very few of them come forward on the Internet and say, boy, this is a load of shit. Even, even yeah. Chappelle did a freaking video about the eight minutes of the day. The day and I told you guys from the start, I thought, nah, th this is all bullshit. It's not real. We're we're seeing what we're shown, and then you find out months later, yeah, there were two guys. Hey, wait a minute. Hairy guy with hair and handcuffs. Then he's on the ground, bald with no legs. And... Nah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But my history with America told me from the in, right from the get-go, don't get sucked up in this shit. And that was what after the corona started. So yeah, it's all a chessboard game. We're we're being uh, moved into position for the next banker fucking move. Well, the corona hmm. really didn't work as they wanted it to. I mean, yeah, it put a lot of people, but there were still enough rabble rousers. What? Well, saying it was a, yours. It was, I'm not wearing a mask. So what happens uh, after corona, corona, or as they're coming close to the? Um, Opening states and shit. Murder hornets! Murder <laughs> hornets are on the loose. <laughs> well, the murder hornets got laughed right out of yeah, I know. the internet. And so then they came back with the second wave. The second wave is going to hit you. Well, the second wave, people were poo pooing that. So they had to have something else to come up. Hmm. Welcome to BLM. Is that Bureau of Land Management, Black Lives Matter, or <laughs> Believe Like Me or else? <laughs> You're good with this shit. I don't know. I don't really care. I got the ultimate fucking race card to pull if I ever need it. Because there are less Mexican Jews on the planet than there are just about anything else. Except maybe like um, tribes in Argentina. <laughs> Might be a little smaller. Oh, yeah, like the little tribes in the rainforest and stuff that pretty much if they see white people, they kill them. And why do they do such things? Because they've had exposure to white people before, and it's just better to just eradicate it right off the bat. You know, and, they never get found. Yeah, yeah. They disappeared into the jungle and were never seen again. Yeah, you know, there's you know, a reason for that. You know, we shit in somebody's post toasties, and they decided to pour them post toasties uh, all over our ass. Yeah, but you know so, what pisses me off about Latinos? What's that? They don't speak Latin. Why do they call themselves Latinos? I don't know. See, there's more of that spell casting crap with the English language. I tried to bring this up either on a show or in the chat. Nothing. Didn't didn't get it taken seriously, but... Well, if you're Spanish or Mexican, where does the Latin part come in? <laughs> I, I mean, Spain's kind of close to Greece and all that, but... It's not like they're... Well, yeah, Greece is behind them. Ooh. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. what it's called Greece. Lose yeah. it, baby, lose it. Well, it's called... No... I don't know why it's called when Greece. In Rome, do as the Romans do. That's yeah. Italy. No, thank you. Wait, why not? I know. What do you got against the Italians? I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just not, no. no. No? No. Wow, Cirque doesn't care for the Italian men too much, from what I heard. They have a reputation that they seem to live up to. So, hmm. What can you say? 
Copenhagen's got a lot of travelers coming in and out of it. So, you know, it's a bigger city. And way out here in the sticks, well, way out here, 40 minute drive. <laughs> but it's the end of the fucking world. There's nowhere to go from here. You hit water. So, hmm. good luck. Ooh, you could walk right off the edge of the earth, huh? No, I could just walk into the ocean. Yeah, but, you know, the ocean eventually gets to the edge. I don't know. How do you know? <laughs> See, all these. this is what rocks me about all these people and their 21st century thinking. And it all makes sense. Yeah, the world's round because uh, atoms are round, cells are round, blah, blah, blah. Everything's round, 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 round. Okay, the world's round too. Fine, shut up. Leave me alone. Don't care. But I don't care anyway. If it was flat, it wouldn't matter one way or the other. If it is round, I don't doesn't make my Cheerios taste any different, dear. So. Well, it's flat where I live. That's all I know. Right, but it's one of those question answer things where the answer doesn't change nothing to the person, but it changes it to the asker of the question. Puts you in a group. That's what they like to do. Is they hurt us. We are herded verbally in so many ways. You like Coke? Yep. You like Pepsi? I like Mountain Dew. Well, you're still, even though you're not in the big two, you're still making a choice. See, yeah. I I make my Trump choice. You just said it's round but flat. I see. I don't know. And why? Why would I fucking care? I found a nice little pocket of it to you know to die in, and this is where I'm at. So. I you know what? what? If it wasn't flat, you wouldn't be able to lay a map out. I. I <laughs> I don't know how the water stays on. That's you know, they've got this gravity crap, but they won't define what gravity is. I think Larry Larry Woods brought that up. With uh, there is a new definition depending on the the circle of science that you're uh, engaging, and there is a new application well, or a- explanation ah, for what gravity truly is. Well, and yeah, they're starting to talk about the ether again although they said that they disproved the ether yeah they didn't disprove anything they had theories they period the science is not proof science the science world what do you call these i call them frauds because we get told about it and i'm telling you if they wanted us to know about anything important i wouldn't have been 27 when i found out about who nikola tesla was they would have taught it to me in school they didn't. Yeah. Everything in school. No. Fuck. I've done every. I've done every drug you can think of, trying to forget the shit that they taught me in school. <laughs> and I think it worked. Yeah. Unlearning is key. I think but, I'm just about there. I'm almost there. One more pipe load, <laughs> just to be ah, sure. <laughs> just to go. be sure, so I don't fuck it up. There you go. There you go. Mm. Well. Let's see. Well, what did you learn? I'm just a speck of dust in the universe. You know what? Um, I am Lone Frog. um, I read something the other day about you are a drop in the ocean and you are the ocean in a drop. Well, what if you're an egomaniac? Wait a minute. What if you're an egomaniac and you think you rule the fucking shit around you? We have people in the RLM who behave in that fashion. Well, you know what? Dr. Seuss addressed that issue when he wrote the story, Yertle the Turtle. And I highly recommend anyone that did not read any Dr. Seuss when they were a child, go back and read the Dr. Seuss stories. Although I understand a few years ago they did say that Dr. Seuss was a racist because he had, in a lot of his drawings and his books, he had monkeys that were brown. I don't know. Apparently he was deemed a racist for some reason. Like, uh, way back yeah. when he first started, and so, therefore, that race of racist scarlet letter yeah. was on him for the rest of his life. But Dr. Seuss, man, there's a lot of lessons if you pay attention to Dr. Seuss. Okay. A lot of lessons. Yeah. But I was complaining about the state of the world. Oh. I know you were complaining about the state of the and, world. And you, and Dr. I think, you know. People Dr. would list, read Yertle the Turtle and find out that the little guy on the bottom, yeah. all he had to do to make the whole damn thing come crumbling down Just was move. burp. Yeah. And the whole shebang come crumbling down. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, see, I'm caught in that catch-22 thing where my mind is resistant to the trappings. 
but my physical reality doesn't really show that. Well, your physical reality is pretty much a reflection of what you're thinking. Now, if blame you look at it from the from the um, um, oh, those physicists. <laughs> no, how how I mean it, Mary, is I'm a, a free spirit in my mind, but I mm-hmm. live in a property big enough. You know, it's a lot of work to maintain it. <laughs> well, it's because it's a collective illusion. Right, right, you right. Know, you're but, not you're not doing it on your own. It's co creation kind true, of thing going but, on. See, it goes against my nature in a sense where hmm, I find myself resisting mentally in ways, but then I do things like trim the yard because Cirque likes it when it's neat. <laughs> so every couple of weeks or so I go out there and give it a little trim. So it looks nice for two days and then it all grows back. And see that's part of this this physical reality and i've watched some you know because i've had lots of time to you know veg because i have to spend recliner time and um i've watched a lot of metaphysical things and all Mm -hmm. this other fun stuff and people keep saying that you need to elevate yourself above and you hear all of these woke people that say you should not have any negativity and you should do this and you should do that Mm -hmm. and i just want to look at them and say wait a minute here Mm -hmm. We're all here in this physical plane. We're all experiencing a physical reality. And instead of pissing and moaning and bitching and groaning all the time about, <laughs> damn it, we're in a physical reality and we need to get rid of the negativity and blah, blah, blah. Embrace your negativity because odds are, for the most part, it's not really a negativity. It's a learning experience. So embrace it. I mean, I totally dislike goat head stickers how did i know i totally dislike goat head stickers i stepped on one barefoot some bitch is hurt oh, so yeah. sometimes you need this shit as a learning experience so everything is a learning experience yeah and yeah. by golly we all volunteered my personal thoughts hmm. we all volunteered to come here into this physical realm hmm. to experience physicality hmm. and if you don't experience physicality how do you know what chocolate tastes like <laughs> How do you know yeah. what a sticker feels like on your bare foot? How do you know what it's like to get a steam burn on your arm? Yep. How do you know what having great sex feels like if you're not experiencing physicality? There are so <laughs> many wonderful experiences, but everybody's so focused on the negative shit. Look at that negative shit and go, wow, not going to do that again. Because, you know, you don't die in this the meat suit expires, mm. but you don't die. You're not your skin. You're wow. not your brain. You're not your heart. You're, you're what operates this. This is your vehicle. Oh, you're trying so, to define conscious. Come on, Mary. Nobody knows what that is. They think is they know. Energy. Well, it's, yeah, but you there can't. Actually, actually, there are. Right. Yeah, they're starting to figure out that there is an energy mm. that still resides after the meat suit dies. Oh, that's just common sense. Yes, it is because common sense. I, but my God, we've what? been taught, no, no, you're nothing. You're okay. just an accident. All right. Well, I it was just mutated until humans showed up. Okay, I was no. taught early that you can't destroy energy. You you need to use energy. It's always there. Till it's yes. used, but you can't destroy yes. it. So that's, we're basically, that's how you define us. We are an energy source. So all this bullshit about where we go after the body dies and all that horseshit, what, it's like the gl- globe or the flat. What the fuck difference does it make? It's only a distraction from you in the moment to get you out of the now and into the future and the past. Keep us out of where we are so we don't realize what's going on now. <laughs> it's a, oh, it's such a great yeah. game. Well, you see it your way, and then I see it well, you know, my, my little twisty ways from the other side. And, and we and seem I, to agree. I see a lot of what's going on in this physical reality yeah, as yeah, something yeah. that has manipulated mm-hmm. over the years. And part of the coming into this physical reality is you forget that you are just an energy being because that's part of the rules of physicality is you forget the energy and there's some here that you know they know what's going on 
they know that we're all energy, but they also know that when people are born here, hey, they don't know shit. We can use them, and they pass that information down to their kids, which is why you have your hierarchical families like the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Paysewers, the the J.P. Morgans, you know, that kind of stuff. Those people pass it down in their family to let you know that, hey, did you know? It really works. Watch, I'll show you. And they give their kids examples. Now, some of those kids go along with the family plan. Some of them, not so much. But... This physicality is is this system is based on a lie, basically. <laughs> All yeah, lies. I mean, yeah. It's nothing but bullshit. If they used well, the truth, it wouldn't work this way. It couldn't. If I ran well, the, my marriage like the fucking Danish government, we would have been divorced six years ago. Yeah. So, no, I don't... She, uh, the only true thing, because every, every good lie has a grain of truth to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every good lie. So the grain of truth is that we all came here voluntarily to experience physical reality hmm. in a thir- three-dimensional plane. We all came here to do that. Now, the elaborate lie that's built on it is that you must have governments, you must have religion, you must have belief systems, you must have this, you must have that, you must pay. Hmm. You must pay someone else. To live on a planet that you are from and born on, (laughs) you must pay. (laughs) And you must continue to pay for everything that you get from said planet that you are part of physically and born to. You must continue to pay throughout the time that you are experiencing this physicality. That is the massive diversion and lie of this yeah we all voluntarily came here to experience physicality but there are some that knew how to work it work it work it and that's what they've done is they have worked it and worked it and you know you go centuries eons like that and it really does become part of the programming of the reality so we just need to reprogram reality and that is done by co-creating a reality that makes this one obsolete. Mm. Well, Buckminster uh, Fuller. I think the way I beat this was by living somewhere where there are very few rich people. That helps. This is a working class neighborhood, this area. And there's people with a few dollars. I mean, it's not poverty stricken by any stretch of the word. It's just real wealth does not live in this town. And yet, real wealth probably does because no, real wealth no. is not measured by how many uh, dollars you have geez, in your bank account, exactly. but by how much you have that cannot be bought. Oh, stop that. That's a bunch of horseshit that died 200 years ago. The reality of this fucking physical life here, as far as I can see, I disagree with this 100%, is that people worship fucking money here just like they do in the city. There's just no money here to worship. But their behavior shows that they do. Okay? They're stuck in this crap. I got raised in it. I escaped it like a lucky guy. I don't know. I just see it so differently, especially from you, Miss Mary. But no, there's no wealth. The wealth I'm talking about is the funds, the money, the games they play. The, yeah. What you're talking and about that- is our, we, we, me and Cirque are happy here. So that already tells yeah. you that. Well, yeah. we wouldn't be happy together in a place that was stifling the shit out of us. No. <laughs> Excuse me. Ooh, drink some you water. Yeah. No, we would have broke yeah. up a long time ago if we were in a stifling, uncomfortable city kind of life. That wouldn't have worked. We needed See, some artistic freedom. That's how the language gets mutated and morphed and perverted. Mm-hmm. Because real wealth is... Having something that money can't buy, <laughs> you can you can be rich beyond yeah beyond someone else's imagination. Yeah, yeah. Those people I mean, are if, not here. You wouldn't be yeah. rich like that if you didn't if you weren't able to imagine to be that rich. But you could be rich beyond someone else's imagination. Yes, but true sir. wealth, okay. and that's one true. Again, I never said anything about of the true. language. I never said anything about true. I was using the fantasy of funding to prove yes. a point about. Those people don't live here. 
There's nothing here to attract them here. So this is all like a level playing field. And even though... And, and, yeah, and, even, and you guys are all better for it. But still, the working class is still trained in, through the television and shit to be judgmental in a financial uh -huh. mindset towards other people, judging them by their appearance and the things that they own. Mm -hmm. See? And you know what? I used to, hmm? back younger days, I used to think, wow... They must be rich. Wow. They must be <laughs> Until I met someone when I was living out in Colorado that um, we had a strike going on at the power plant that I worked at. Yeah. And there was one gentleman that rose, drove a ratty tatty El Camino. You know, rust around the fender wells mm -hmm. and all that other fun shit. Ran like a top, but looked like shit. And he always had bibbies on and a shirt with the sleeves cut off. Kind of like a uh, Larry the Cable Guy, only with bibby overalls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And But he wasn't that heavy. He was, mm. But, you know, really personable guy. Yeah. And he was there for every day of the strike. And, you know, I'd sit there and BS with him and stuff. And the strike got settled. And I was one of the few people that, you know, would let them the strikers have access to the bathroom. Mm. And so I got invited to the after strike party. And that's where you ran into him won. again. Yeah, I ran into him again and this guy mm -hmm. threatened to pull all of his money out of Colorado Ute if they didn't settle with the strikers and so they settled with the strikers. <sighs> this guy was one of the richest guys in Colorado. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't know it from and that to me was a really big hello. Mm -hmm. You don't have to dress to the nines. You don't have to drive a limo. You don't have to to be someone that's got lots of samoles. Right. So, and he didn't, you know, he didn't act like he was a rich person. But, you know, he worked his ass off and got himself to where he was at. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know, I'm familiar with the story. We've been married on radio for years. I, I've numbered. Yes, we have. I've numbered some of these. You could have just said number seventeen. And well, yeah, oh yeah, the guy enough. at the strike. <laughs> I'm kidding, yeah. Mary. I'm teasing you. No, I know. But, yo, but, oh you yeah, know, you I've told that. I've met lots of people hmm? like that in my life, but hmm? I was lucky enough to meet him when I was only like nineteen, and it was like, damn. Hmm. So that kind of sort of laid the groundwork for me for for the rest of my adult so far you're, life. You're just not a very good. Bigot, you, you you don't judge people in the traditional senses of the terminology. Judge, so you're hard to hard to talk to about this because you're on the good side of it. You don't you don't seem to connect with the negative side to get clarity because you're so positive. You just jump to a positive thing, you make it really difficult. Well, <sighs> what I am I going to do? With I you? know. I just I judge people by their actions. By what what we are made of is something that you, you don't visually see it. You think you visually see it. Because that's what we're told. We got eyes to look at it, shit. No, 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 no. Yeah. You got eyes so you don't fall off the fucking, uh, you know, the step and break your fucking neck. You got uh, something else to see people with if you get told that, I think. There's yeah. other levels of understanding that your eyes don't perform. You got to use other things. You got to hear them. Yeah. You, yeah. you got to be a. You got to be aware of your own vibration. If you believe in these things, then they're real. And if you don't believe in them, then you don't, and they're not real. Simple as that. It's a personal, much, yeah. personal perspective. This life is whatever the hell you want it to be. Yet we're all, you know, boxed in with these rules, regulations, and. Oh, confinements. The confinements of freedom are just sad. They've got all these just, you know, young kids. They're all plugged into the Internet on the phone. Yep. You know, or whatever they're doing, texting. Or They're not in the moment they're in. They're in the future or they're in the past. And I, I had the luxury, now I'm looking back on my life, of not getting trapped into that. Whatever the equivalent of it in my day was, I missed it because I was out running around being free, risking my, <laughs> you know, I was risking my freedom because they put me in jail for a couple of weeks at a time once they caught me. So I was risking that 
happening just to get the fuck away from the, the life at 12. And people are like, wow, the fuck's... You're only 12. What do you know? You know? Oh, you know what? And 12-year-olds can say some of the most insightful things. Mm -hmm. And I think that if these log idiots would just get the fuck out of the way and go away, human life would take care of itself. And when you're about 12 is when you become independent. Okay? And if you don't, that tells everybody else what you are. (laughs) So... The independent ones are supposed to break off at about 12, but school fucked all that up and confined us all in little groups, age groups, and this group and that group. Everything that doesn't have anything to fucking do with anything, but nothing that mattered. Like, oh, these people are excellent in art. Let's put them together and see what they create. It was 9-year-olds, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, and what? Because some kids are slow and some kids are fast. It doesn't have shit to do with their age. Yeah, it's like, man, when they get rid of the one-room schoolhouses. Right, so all our life we've been just fucking conditioned with these protocols with age and groups and gender and this and that. And they got creative and they even created some new genders for us to experiment with. I know, isn't that just... But, you know, you don't really hear a whole hell of a lot about that right now. I mean, occasionally you hear the transgender and stuff, but you're not hearing all the different pronouns and shit because right now, Black Lives Matter has won the Wheel of Fortune spin. (laughs) And so, you know, (laughs) when they spin the wheel again, it might be you're transphobic or it might be you're homophobic. Or it might be that you're Islamophobic. Or you're going to be some kind of phobic because it is the phobic wheel of fortune. Or maybe it's the wheel of phobic. I don't know. But there's the whole concept of paying attention to that wheel. Mm -hmm. You need to stop because then wheels on that bus, they go round and round. And it will keep... Define stop. I I mean, how do you do that? It's a great idea, but how do you stop? (sighs) It's a really fine line, I think, because you have to know it's out there in order to know what you're dealing with. And then you need to dismiss it. So it's just a decision, right? If it does not fit, Mm. you know, dismiss it. So it's a decision you make. It's not a physical action. You're not burning anybody's house down or spray painting shit on there. No, you're just thinking. And this is what I'm trying to express on this show over the years is that we have been talked out of thinking for ourselves. In fact, if you ever do anything that resembles thinking for yourself in a public setting, people still look at you funny to the to this day. Like, whoa, you're not supposed to say shit like that. Well, that's why public education teaches you what to think and not how to think. Plus society. Well, there's a lot of folks that fail in school. I'm not the only one. So you got to remember, there's that side of society that failed at school, but still made money. I mean, crap. I knew a lot of people that didn't have an education, but they lied about it, or they found a business, or they did something that didn't require that shit in the first place. So there were mm-hmm. ways around. They'll never get wealthy, but comfort comfort was was achievable in my day. Yeah. Yeah. Now they've taken all these things away from us. We can't can't talk to people you can't be within six feet of people you can't this you got to wear a mask you got to are you out of your fucking mind how could you not see that this has nothing to do with your medical health in any way shape or form have to be an idiot and you know that's why they're they're trying to (coughs) to push the second wave again because but it's it's not the protesters or the rioters that have to worry about covid because they're wearing masks (laughs) to obscure you being able to recognize them, but they're wearing masks. Yeah. They're being socially responsible. Yeah. You're right. But these people go into Trump rallies or these people that want to go to concerts or mm. people that want to go to sporting events or mm. people that want to you know, go to church mm. or any kind of backyard gathering. You can't do that because we can't enforce social distancing on such things. Social distancing, my ass. You know, they tried to enforce that crap at sock cops when I was in middle school, and it didn't work then. 
Hmm. But people are falling for it, you know. Oh, if if you get if you partake of this over here, you might be you just might get COVID. You might get the COVID. But if you do this over here, you're not going to get the COVID because that's okay. They're just expressing themselves. So, yeah, I'm still amazed that people ha- are making this big deal out of a flu anyway. Flu. Yeah. What, what and kind the of CDC just came out with a what kind of it came out with some kind of thing that said that it is uh, where is that? CDC confirms extremely low COVID nineteen death rate. Exactly. No worse than the flu. Yep. If anything yeah, less. you're more likely to die in a car accident or get struck by lightning. And still, they're still playing this fucking game as though it's as serious as, as they said it was when everybody's with the ability to read or listen to a link could have heard by now on the Internet something that said, hey, take a look at this. They're lying. So with all this, they're lying out there. They've managed to... Uh, They've uh, they've managed to convince the the population that it's real. <laughs> Come on, really? Well, it has gone from seeing is believing to believing is seeing. If you believe, if you believe, you will see that this is what's happening right now in this here world. Mm. But if you see and don't believe, oh, you're blind. You're an idiot. Hmm. How dare you, you conspiracy theorist you, when you're actually believing your actual experience as opposed to what you're being told. So it's a bass awkward, topsy-turvy world, and we all need to just stop and realize that that's what they want to keep it as. Yeah, the chaos. Yes, because somebody benefits from Hmm. the chaos. Right, how? It's all computer-generated fucking money. It's not real. They're not doing... We're just getting told a story, and shit is... Shit but is happening. bedtime stories. Oh, they're such wonderful bedtime stories, and people get so wrapped up in them. You know, I can remember as a kid, my mom watching her stories. Mm. And yeah, oh, my God, did story. you see what happened on, on The Young and the Restless? Oh, my God, I can't believe... You know, and... People get wrapped up in that story. That was because TV was new to them in their way, uh-huh. right? They were wired one way. My mother was like that, too, with the daytime soap or two. She had a couple she liked. But but you know uh, what? Before TV, they had the radio programs. Right, and right, right. And every week, they had to listen to that. I have to listen to my program. i got to see what happened. No, she grew up in England, so it was different there than it was in the States. Yeah. But she was still on that wavelength like your mother, where Mm -hmm. they were addicted to these stories. And they knew they were ridiculous drama stories, but they loved them. So it was in the wiring of the storyteller was giving them exactly what they wanted. They knew how to do that. They they still do with TV. And we're we're not, me and you, for example, I'd say Grimner and maybe Rob Works. Oh, Frumpy, Sock Puppet, Moose Girl, Salt Lake City Mike, Lime Lone Frog. (laughs) These people that I'm reading the names off of, I don't think they're wired to accept that kind of shit anymore. Well, they may may have been in the in their past, but no, no, it's over. And whatever whatever uh, grip the state had on me, I got, I I escaped it really really early. And I've had the uh, um, I've had the most interesting experience alive amongst my peers. I have fun still, even when the, everybody else is on fire. Even if I'm there, I'm like through earthquakes and hurricanes. I'd always try to make fun and have a get have have something good come of it. You know, make it better when we rebuild it. <laughs> you know, give it a new paint job, yeah. something. Well, we're we're in a time right now where when you fix one problem, there's a nine other problems just went all fucky ducky over here. So there's no relief from all the drama. They did this to us, and the public is, as a collective, supporting it, and it needs to stop. <laughs> not not change it, not fix it, just stop it. 
But how boring would life be if you had no challenges? And so instead of looking at them as, yes, they are problems, but instead of looking at them as, oh, my God, it's so dire. Oh, we're never going to start looking at it as, how can I solve this? What's a workaround for this? You know, and and get past it and then move on to the next one. You know, it's, it's like... Um, I, I really think everybody has to go through a certain path, a certain certain number of experiences. Now, some people, they just stick a toe in, and they go, whew, no, okay, uh, that's not for me. Like you, you suck a toe in. Whew, yeah. No, that's not for me. Yeah. Some of us waited around for a while. <laughs> you know, some of us got in there kind of neck deep and then went, whoa, I can't find the bottom. And so backed out, you know, and that's everybody has their different levels of learning that, you know, how far it or how bad it needs to get, how deep it needs to get before they actually get the lesson and back out and move on to the next one. And some of them, like you with with the programming shit, you just stuck a little toe in and mm-hmm. you went, no, nope, no, nope, not for me. I'm going to go. I'm going to go check this shit out over here. Oh, yeah, pretty much. So. I think, and I think everybody goes through that. It just some some people just really like wallowing in it. Oh yeah, they they called me every name you can imagine in in my life for not sticking around, you know, because yeah. there was life to live out there, and by God, I was going to see some of it, not just you know do what my dad did, which raise raise kids, and he waited until he was old to, before he did any real traveling. So. Hmm. I did all my yeah. shit when I was his, you know, when I was, when he was young, when I was in my 20s and 30s, I was crazy living. And then when I got a little older, when I started hit my 40s, it slowed down a little bit. Not, not work all that till I was in my 40s, then settled, then go out running around. And the time of history where I got to run around in, for me, was just perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it hadn't gotten too, uh, what, Nazi. There was still, I got into airplanes and flew to uh, London from L.A., and there was no TSA or show up two hours before your flight so we can make sure you get your bags on the plane and all that. Yeah. It was a slower time, right? And then... You know, that's... Mm. You're talking about that, and I'm thinking that's what's the fun part about... Uh, Farmer and I have occasionally watched like the old Magnum PIs mm. and Columbo, and and I keep thinking, ah, oh, I love Tom Selleck. He was just such a <laughs> eye candy. See, but but what? I didn't really watch a lot of Magnum, but you know, I liked him in Quickly Down Under. I thought but that was still. an awesome movie. Yeah. But um, yeah. in any case, you know, we're watching some of these. Old reruns, like the the first series of Star Trek, and some of the Ooh, old Petticoat yeah. Junction, oh yeah, those yeah. kind of things, yeah. you know. And you see people, and they're going, "We're going to go and take take plane trip," and it's like they don't have to call and book anything in advance. They just drive up to the airport, and I know it's TV land, but still, you know, drive up to the airport, and they just fly over to wherever, and then they fly back, and all this, and it's like. You can't do that shit nowadays. Man, they have geared that shit down. You got to wait in line, wait in line, wait in line. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm not into this hurry up and wait shit. I'll just sit over here and take my time doing what I want to do. Well, and then once I get on this plane, this is all pre all this pre 911 shit. So we go from LA to New York. And then it's going to go from New York to Heathrow. And there's a group of us, and we're all about 20-odd years old, give or take. Me, I was a little older. I think I was 30. And there was maybe six or eight of us, and we're all sitting in the back of the plane together drinking and carrying on, telling stories, and killing the time because it's, a, you know, it's a, kind of a long flight. Sit there by yourself, all you know, twiddling your fucking thumbs like some kind of dummy. No, we in the in the day we would just start talking about shit and people would jump in the conversation, travel, and have fun. And now it's like it's like a torture to travel. 
Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to mess with it. <laughs> well, I'm so fortunate that I made the decisions to do the things that I decided to do. And it's almost like I could sit here and claim I saw all this coming. I knew what the world was going to. No, no, no. What what happened is the circumstances fit the story is all. You know? Mm-hmm. And I got mm-hmm. very lucky in, in, in a way, met somebody that was uh, in a place in the world that wasn't stupid. You know, where the politicians are just a little greedy. They're not completely going to bend you over a table and, you know, take take your lunch money. Yep, they, slavery light. They kiss, <laughs> they kiss you before they fuck you here. It's very nice. Oh, hey. I'm telling you. Hey. But guess what? It's the end of the show. But you know what? Yeah. The the tax what? the tax structure here, which is if you thought it through uh on a working class level is way better for the people than the one I come from. <laughs> we'll talk about it sometime on the show. You'll you'll be amazed. The benefits that these folks get from the input from their you know, their slavery. The bang for their buck, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, I think it's just that the loose rope and, you know, they're uh, they're kinder to each other because they're a tribe, not a not a country. It's different. Oh, that does make a difference. I think yeah. so, yeah. yeah. Anyway, thanks a lot, everybody, for playing along on the Dork Table podcast with Miss Graham Z and myself, Flash. And uh, we got, uh, we got a... a List of uh, all the scheduled radio podcasts on the site. Go to reallibertymedia.com. It's easy to navigate. And if you want to play in the chat, make a name. Anything else, Miss Mary? Uh, I can't think of anything else except have an absolutely dorkular weekend, y'all. Hmm. And uh, I'm going to kick back and do a little bit of Max relaxing while the doggies are still outside. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, no, I do have one more thing. Grim did the very last Leftovers podcast this Monday, but he's not going to stop doing the podcast. He's going to rename and restructure the podcast. It's going to be a different format. So, Sweet. Yeah, but so give it a, you know, he's going to give it a new name. So if you're looking for Leftovers, it won't be Leftovers. It'll be Grim something else, but we don't know what he's going to call it yet. It's a surprise. Yeah. Surprise. Thanks, everybody. See you. Love you. Bye.